Hello. As you can probably gather, I'm on the ferry to Iona, an island that traces its roots in Christianity over a thousand years back to the time of St. Columba. But for the 20th century pilgrim like us, it's still quite a trek to get here. You have to come from Glasgow to Oban, the ferry to Mull, across to Finnefort, and then finally this last hop by ferry across the Sound of Iona. Mind you, when you think Columba made the journey in a coracle from Ireland, I suppose we should be very grateful that the ferries have improved a good bit since then. On the map, Iona is one of those hardly noticeable dots of the Inner Hebrides along Scotland's west coast. It's home for just 90 people, though each summer they manage to welcome some 90,000 pilgrims and visitors disgorged hourly by boat. But if Iona offers anything, it's a great sense of peace, of being away from the hurry and worry of life. It's a perfect place to make New Year resolutions. There's no crime to speak of, Doors are seldom locked, and with just two roads, the only rush hour is at feeding time. This is the port of the Coracle, and tradition has it that this is where Columba first landed. He and 12 followers brought their message of new life in a voyage from Ireland made in the flimsiest of craft. It's not difficult to imagine their hopes, not to mention their enormous relief when they waded ashore and clambered up this shingle beach for the first time. The spiritual legacy of that pilgrim band lives on at Iona's village Kirk, and just across the way at the island's famous abbey, built and rebuilt since Columba's day to become a place of pilgrimage for people from all over the world. And just as Christians down the centuries have met here to sing their songs of praise to God, so now we join the congregation of islanders and visitors and members of the Abbey community. And they begin our New Year worship with a hymn that proclaims the glory of God, Tell Out My Soul. Tell out my soul. For many visitors here, the Abbey is Iona. It's now the home of the Iona community, founded 50 years ago as Britain suffered the depths of depression. In Govan, with thousands of unemployed shipyard workers, the local minister, George MacLeod, felt something had to be done. So, unused skills were harnessed to help renovate the old Abbey, to turn it into a centre where people could relate work and worship, the sacred and the secular. The work was long and difficult, with no heavy machinery and no money. Then in 1939, when war broke out, there were no materials either. So, there we were, 
all ready to build, but with no timber. However, a ship coming over from Canada struck a storm, jettisons its deck cargo on the mouth of the Clyde, and it was carrying timber, and it floated, the timber floated 40 miles and landed on the coast of Mull, opposite Iona, all the right length. And there we were, started. And from that moment, I realized that all my hesitations were nonsense, and God really wanted Iona rebuilt. And as the Iona community celebrates its half century, the work continues here with the building of the McLeod Center. It will enable many more visitors to share in George MacLeod's vision of a unity between doing and believing. The theme of God's involvement in everyday living is reflected in our next hymn, written, as are many in the program today, by members of the Iona community. I am for you. John McInnes has lived on Iona all his life and runs a farm with his wife, Annabelle. This is a small family farm. He was involved in producing store calves and store lambs. And that's basically what you can do here, and uh, everybody more or less does the same. The family are they're very good at helping at busy times, and my wife is always on hand to help out uh, when, when need be. Certain times of year that are busier than than other times, the lambing time and when the crops are coming in. So it's all hands and deck. It's a good healthy environment. It's a good place to to bring up children in their early years at least. Perhaps not so much when they have to go away for for their education, etc. And you're both from Iona. That must be pretty rare for you to marry. It's uh, fairly rare, perhaps you could say. What did Mr. Miller say when we were married? He didn't think that two people in Iona could love one another. <laughs> but uh, maybe it's not just quite like that. What keeps you here? What's the magnetism of the place? Well, the children here have a great advantage to the children in the mainland. And it's a caring place. 
as well. Nobody will see you stuck. If you're in trouble, people are very good at coming to help you. Whereas in the city, you might be frightened to go and ask for help, but here you don't have to ask. If something goes wrong, people automatically offer their help. Yes. John, tell me about the hymn you've chosen. I chose Summer Suns Are Glowing. The words of the hymn, to me, seem to sum up the way things are here. We're affected a lot by the weather in our daily decisions, etc. And when you get good weather, it just seems to make that bit difference. You don't have to spend too much time in the Abbey before you can almost imagine yourself back amongst the Benedictine monks who first lived here. But the community at the Abbey today is anything but cloistered. In place of the monks, you'll find lively groups of people, young and old. Every summer they come here from all over the world to share their experience of Christianity in a modern society. I think the great thing about Iona is that it's a place where people can come together. I feel that I'm a more complete person today than I was four weeks ago when I first came. It makes me think a lot about what do I need to get from worship and what does my, how do my spirituality express itself in terms of rituals and liturgy and so forth. One of the marks of the place is the number of young people who come and spend a period of time from three months upwards working as volunteers with us and fully taking a part in the life and worship of the Abbey. It's great to see how so many young people who are unemployed and left at the sidelines of society find that they're able to completely respond to meaningful work and to full participation. And they go away from here with much greater self-confidence and an image of the meaning of their lives that is greater than when they came. And the hymn that you're going to sing now with the children, that relates to that? Yes, it speaks very simply of how our faith calls us to respond with the living of our whole lives.
Matty McKechnie is a member of the Iona community and he's responsible for the maintenance of the abbey and its surroundings. This is the nunnery and um, it's obviously been a very fine building in its day because you can see traces of the, the fine architecture. For, for instance, that uh, decorative uh, string coating around the window is considered to be uh, uh, an Irish feature. Now what are you actually doing here? Well, we're pointing this. We've, uh, we've picked out the, the old line that was perished uh, to a depth of about four inches and then we've uh, tamped it in and now this is the final pointing to keep the weather out. Now this isn't just cement, I mean it's got tiny little pebbles oh, in yes, it. Oh yes, uh, the, these tiny little pebbles, some of them are red, but some of them are granite and feldspar and quartz and we get these on the west side of the island and at the north end of the island and uh, it's got to be special uh, wind and tide conditions to get them and you could go there many times and not get any but uh, one has to be persistent and quite often we find them in, uh, in just in little heaps as, as the tide has receded and left them. It's difficult to get the, the proper effect and one, well I'm always striving after perfection knowing that I'll never achieve it and I feel this, uh, this relates to uh, our faith as well that we have to be striving all the time for something that we can't really achieve. Now the hymn that you've chosen, I Feel the Winds of God Today, that's, uh, that's very appropriate for Iona, isn't it? Well indeed, we're... Uh, we're very much governed by the winds here. Uh, and I also feel an affinity with Columba and many of the other pilgrims who came here and set their sails for Iona. Margaret Mall came to Iona from Glasgow four years ago and now teaches the 14 pupils of the island school. The children here are much more mature than the children in Glasgow. They have to get along together here in a way that you don't in a big school. You can change your friends because you have another friend to go to. Here they can. If they quarrel, it has to be made up and life go on. When they come to school, they know they're only going to be here for seven years and then they're going to have to go away and look after themselves in a way that the children in the mainland don't leave home until maybe they go to university. The children here have to leave home at 12 to go to school in Oban. I thought I was a country person, but I realised how abysmally ignorant I was and the children have taught me an enormous amount about nature. It was just by chance they went out one day and said, Mrs. Moore, can we do the garden? And I said, yes. And they riddled and hoed and dug. 
and came back and said it's time we put in potatoes and we should have had our lettuces in, radishes should be in now. And in our first year, I think we had six different crops and we cooked the potatoes in here and ate them at, the, at harvesting time. <laughs> and what dimension has this place, Iona, given to your faith? Well, I think it's deepened it, probably because I've met so many other people who have who are able to say a lot about their faith and I find it's made it easier for me to speak about my faith. Tell me about the hymn that you've chosen. I've chosen The Touching Place. Uh, the words are written by John Bell and my son Graham and it's a song I used to sing to Graham or the tune is uh, a Gaelic lullaby that I sang to the children when they were small. Christ is the one. Helen Stephen is employed by the Iona community as their peace and justice organiser. My job involves mostly working in central Scotland, um, occasionally for about six weeks coming to Iona to lead workshops, but the rest of the time trying to raise consciousness and raise awareness of the issues of justice and peace and Christian involvement with those particular aspects. Peace and justice are two very neat words, but for a Christian what does that actually mean? I think it means getting involved directly with the issues of society. It means being political and getting right in to questions facing us today, questions of injustice in our own country, questions of 
racism, questions of apartheid in South Africa, disarmament, all the issues that are facing our world today that are really life-threatening and, and denying full humanity to people. But many people in the church still say that politics and religion just don't mix. I simply can't understand how they make that definition and how they can separate the two. I think Jesus came to speak about life and right through the Old and the New Testament, justice is spoken of continuously. Exercising choice for you has meant that twice you've been put in prison. Do you think that's the sort of thing that a Christian ought to be involved in? Somebody said once, and I, I often quote it, that a Christian should be without fear, happy and always in trouble. And for me, that has meant that I felt that I have had to break the law um, by confronting a nuclear base, and that has, has taken me to prison. That was my personal choice. I'm not saying everybody should, that would be everybody's way. But I do say that people should find what their Christian conviction is and then stand up and express it. I don't ever undertake the things that I do lightly. And I feel that it's kind of easy to get caught up in almost in the excitement of action. And if it's not rooted in prayer, this is a real danger. So I do try to reflect and to find the right way of acting. You've chosen a hymn that fits in very well with the work that you're involved in. Yes, I've chosen Inspired by Love and Anger. I believe that as Christians we have to be angry, but we also have to have our anger infused with love. Marlene Finlayson and her husband are members of the Iona community and live and work in the Abbey. It's understandable that it's about seeing yourself in relationship to other people and being responsible for them and accountable to them and about finding ways to love them. And that's something that we can take with us when we go to live somewhere else. 
God shares with us the awesome responsibility of caring for the world. Look at your hands. See the touch and the tenderness. Look at your feet. See the path and the direction. Look at your heart. See the fire and the love. Look at the cross. See God's Son and our Saviour. This is God's world. May God's blessing rest on us. May God's care surround us. And may God lead our lives with love.